Welcome back, everybody. Time in the WHIP studios is 1131. Temple season is over, and the career of Will Cummings is over as well. But it was a special one here on North Broad Street, a fantastic four years by the senior leader of Will Cummings, who ends up having a finish of over a career points of 1,000. And Will Cummings is kind enough to join us in studio right now. Will, we appreciate you coming on out here following the end of the season. Thanks for a few minutes, and how are you, my friend? Uh, I'm cool, no problem. Uh, Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming on, and congratulations on what is the end of your college career. And this was a group that got screwed out of the NCAA tournament. I know you were very angry, and you were playing with an intense passion like you always do in this NIT tournament, and you wanted to send a message to the selection committee and win the NIT. That doesn't happen as you guys fall a little bit short in the semifinals, but this was a special group, and it's a group that has a bright future. How do you remember this group as you were the senior leader of this team? Um, I would say just a group that that worked really hard. Um, I throw all the things that we went through uh, ups and downs a lot during the season, uh, as far as losing streaks and winning streaks and losing streaks and winning streaks. But um, I just think it was a group that that really just wanted to win uh, this year, and uh, we really try to put it on the line every game and just work as hard as possible, trying to uh, try to make Timber proud. Last night in the first half, it looked like things were getting off to a good start for you guys. As you get off to that hot start, you end up, for most of the first half, leading by 11, but then that lead gets down to 5. And in the second half, you guys just had an abysmal shooting performance as a team going 9-40 of 40 from the field. I understand shots just don't fall on some nights, but what went wrong with you guys in the second half? Um, I really don't really remember right now. Um... I really just think shots just didn't fall. Uh, normally, we're knocking those out and we're increasing our lead, but uh, momentum change. Uh, some of the calls we didn't get uh, late in that game, and um, I mean things just happened. That's, that's really all I can think about is just shots just really didn't fall. Because I mean we kind of got all the shots that we normally take. Uh, nothing crazy, nothing out of ordinary of the shots, but. Uh, they just didn't follow us uh, yesterday. I know Miami lost their big man in that game. He had a concussion and the eye injury, as well as Jim Laranega, the head coach of Miami, told us that after the game. It seemed like you guys were settling for a lot of three-pointers last night as there was an increase of that in the second half. Did Miami do anything specifically that kind of took away the drive game last night for the Temple Owls? Um, I don't really think to. Um, I think we're getting to the rim. Um, shots just didn't go in. Uh, shots were contested. Uh, they did a pretty good job on defense, but... Um, I mean, it's just really hard to try to think back and try to remember all the plays right now, but um, credit to them, they did a great job of defending and um, and some things that didn't go right for us. I know you've seen some good Temple players' careers end with Khalif Wide in the NCAA tournament and the run that he went on going over 30 points, not once, but twice. You saw Relair Hollis Jefferson' careers end, uh, Dalton Pepper last year. Now your career is ending. What were those moments like for you as you exited the court last night at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden? Um, I would say it was just tough uh, knowing that you can't, you can't get anything back. Um, it was just it was just fun. Uh, I would say it was. I was more frustrated than anything at the time. I wasn't sad or anything. I was just frustrated that we lost, <laughs> and and really how we lost. So, um, I'm just. It still hasn't really hit me that I, I don't have to go to practice today or tomorrow <laughs> or anything like that. But. Um, overall, just been a great ride, and um, just going to change every moment. You're going to miss Fran Dumphy sitting on the uh, bench, just slapping his yeah, hands, screaming, definitely. going crazy, and all those moments in yeah, practice as that's well. That's my man, definitely. I'm going to miss all that. Um, him yelling at me, that's one thing I'm going to miss. I mean, um, I'm really just grateful for all the, all the things that he's, he's done and taught me, uh, yelling at me all the time. Uh, I'm appreciative of that. Um, it's really just been a, a fun ride, and, and I enjoyed all the learning experiences throughout. You always hear players say their coach was their father figure, and what I really saw what a father figure was was when Fran Dumphy and the relationship he had with Khalif Wyatt. As you could tell, they were very close, and there was that level of respect for one another, and Khalif uh, realized that he had to listen to Coach Dumphy, and hey, that guy's produced a great season for Temple when you guys went up and lost to Indiana but got to that next round of the NCAA tournament to you. What does Fran Dumphy mean to you, and how has he made you grow not only on the court but off the court? Um, it's, it's definitely uh, sort of the same with, as, as Khalif. Uh, um, our relationship grew um, 
a lot from my, my junior to senior year. We kind of just grew more together. Um, he trusted me a lot more, um, is making calls and stuff on the court, and he's really off the court too. Um, we really just like, like on the same page and with everything. Uh, we talked more than we did in the, in the previous year. So um, I would say our relationship really grew over the past year, and I think that really helped um, us come out here and, and perform better on the court as, as a basketball team. Will Cummings from the Temple basketball team, now former Temple Owl, joins us in the studio, WHIP Radio in Philadelphia. Zach Gelb here with you as Temple falls last night in Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena by a score of 60-57 to 57 in the NIT semifinal. I asked you this last night, and I would even say it's kind of of an unfair question for me to ask you right when the game ends yeah. of what Temple University means to you because your college career is now over and there's just so many emotions. Now that you had a few hours to let it sink in, I know it may not even have hit you yet, but if you just had to summarize these last four years of when you first walked in from Jacksonville, Florida, up until now, of what Temple University did for you, what would you say when you think about Temple? Uh, I would say really just I would say it made me tougher, um, just from my freshman year to my senior year. Um, just coming in as a freshman, uh, not really, not really knowing what to expect. Uh, just developing over these years through hard work and stuff like that. And just, I would say Temple, just the one where I can sum it up is just is is tougher or toughness. Um, I think that's really what what really I, I learned and, and developed throughout the four years that I've been here. It's just a, a different a different type of mindset and toughness that that Coach Dunphy helped with and, and and just guys around me helped with. Recruiting is always a big topic of conversation, and you've seen both up and downs of the recruiting of this program when you guys get a lot of players and then when you don't get a lot of players. Next year they're getting in a lot of players and a lot of local players. You weren't a player that was a local guy coming up from Florida. If a recruit came up to Will Cummings and said, why should I come to Temple University? Why should I play under Fran Dunphy, Aaron McKee, Sean Trice, Dwayne Killings, Dave Duke, and the entire staff? What would you say to them? Um, first of all, I would say just when you when you get on the court and you start playing, you know that you've earned it. Um, they're not really going to throw you out on the court if you haven't really proved that you should be on the court with everybody else. Um, I think that's really the, the biggest thing that, that um, recruits should know. Um, that just know when you when your time comes and you're playing, just know that you you really put the the work in and you you've earned it and and uh, and just trust the process of, of just getting better and hard work and trusting the coaches. And you were one of those players that were an example of that. Your freshman year, you only had 29,000 points, then 197, 488. And if these stats are updated from last, I don't know how quickly uh, CollegeBasketballReference.com updates their sites. That would be 531. You finished for the season. That's over a thousand points. Only 50 players in Temple University have scored 1,000 points. How'd you get from step one to the end when you only had 29 points and now you're a freaking 1,000 point scorer? Um, I really don't know. I think I just really try to change my mindset and and just really, um, I had to change my mentality, change my ways, and just make sure I, I was I was a lot more focused coming to my junior year when, when all that started as far as the increases in stats and all that stuff. But um, I think it's just a testimony to hard work and, uh, and really just putting your mind to something and, and really believing in yourself before anybody else can. And I think that's really what, what happened. Uh, that provided a change. One of those players that you're seeing get better year by year from his freshman year up until now as he just completed his sophomore year is Josh Brown. And I know you say he's like your little brother. How can Josh Brown get better as a basketball player? Um, you can improve it in all areas. Um, next year is going to be really his team. Uh, he's going to have to step up his game tremendously for them to, to get back to where we were or even better than, than uh, this year. So um, I'm, I'm not going to pick that one particular thing. I mean, I felt like when I was going for my sophomore to junior year, I had to improve in all areas in order to take my, my, my game to, to the next level. And um, I provide the same um, uh, information for him is just really work on your overall game and, and just not really um, go into the offseason bias on what you need to work on, just work on everything. You guys lose a lot of personality, a lot of leadership, and a lot of points in that backcourt with you and Jesse graduating from the program and going on to bigger and better things as your Temple University career ended last night up against Miami in a 60-57 to loss at the world's most famous arena. Zach Gelb here with you, WHIP Radio. Quinn Decozzi is going to be one of those guys that's going to be looked at as a senior leader to try to replace that production. Q and who, who are some other guys, and Josh, we mentioned it, but who are some guys that are going to try to replace that production of what you and Will and, and Jesse brought to this team? Um, I would say Dan. Dan's going to really, um, I feel like he's going to have a great year next year. Um, it's really, he's been putting the hard work and all the hours late night and stuff. So I feel like his time to, to step up and show what he can really do is going to happen. And, and you got like, um, you got guys like Mark and, and, and Vontae and all those guys. I think it's going to be an overall team 
team step up. Uh, everybody has to uh, come together, and um, and I think Jalen's going to be the the ring leader of them all. He's going to be the I think the vocal and leader, step into my place and take over that aspect. But um, I think this the whole team has really just do everything that they can to get better in the offseason and come back better. And how can you tell Jalen Bond though, right? He's a scary guy to go up against, <laughs> right? He's the toughest guy on the team, has to be. <laughs> Definitely, he's a, he's a, he's a warrior. He uh, he works tremendously hard on on, on the court and. Um, uh, you can just tell from this year uh, who is going to step up and, and take over the leading spot after me. You can tell it's just going to be Jalen, um, just because he's the he's the more older guy and he kind of understands what what's going on in, in that aspect. Who was the most influential teammate of yours through your four years at Temple? Uh, most influential, I would say. I got to name two guys. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you have all the time in the world. You could say whatever you want here. <laughs> I want to say uh, uh, Scooty Randall and Michael Eric. And, okay. Uh, well, actually, one more in uh, Jake Adino. He kind of Jake Adino was the was the one that that really helped me out a lot my freshman year. Kind of uh, kind of got me through the struggles of freshman year. Uh, and Michael Airy was a he's a great guy. I still talk I still talk to Scooty and Mike and, and Jake all all the time. Uh, I FaceTime Scooty in, in Japan. Uh, talk to Mike via text or, or wherever he's at right now. I can't remember, but um, I mean those guys really helped a lot and just, they just provided a, a lot of great wisdom for me. And it's a process playing here at Temple University because, like you said, you only get your minutes on how much work you put into it. And freshmen don't come in here. I know you saw a little bit different this year with Obi, but freshmen don't come in here and say, hey, we're going to give you 30 minutes right off the bat. As a freshman, how do you keep that confidence up? Um, just really you just have to keep working and kind of understand uh, what's going on. Um, you really got to stay in the gym and, and not really get down on yourself because once you lose confidence, then, then it's going to it's gonna landslide and, and things not going to get any better from that. So um, just Obi, Obi earned it. Obi didn't, wasn't given anything. Um, Obi came into practice and into workouts and everything and earned his, 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 his stay on the court. So um, that wasn't really anything different for him. He, I feel like he came in more ready than I was as a freshman. So um, he, he earned his spot. And he's so athletic. Oh, he yeah, has such yeah. a bright future. Yeah, definitely. So we're talking to Will Cummins here in the WHIP studio. Zach Gelb here with you, WHIP Radio, all via iHeartRadio. 215-204-9447 is our number. Next step for you, the next big task is the PIT. Uh, it's April 8th to 11th. Uh, Langston Galloway was the big feature player last year, now playing with the Knicks. What do you want to prove at this uh, PIT? Uh, I'm actually going to go out there and improve um, what they saw throughout the season. It's, it's, I'm, that's the type of player I am. Uh, I'm not really going in. Trying to trying to put any pressure on myself. That's when when things go wrong. I'm just go out there and just play my game, um, have fun, and just um, just play a game of basketball and uh, just do what I do on the court and uh, let things fall how they fall. You play with the chip on your shoulder. You're a fearless player. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're seven feet tall or or six five. You're going right to the basket and trying to get that M one opportunity. And we saw so many of that this year. Where does that chip on the shoulder derive from? <laughs> uh, Probably just not playing. Uh, I mean, um, just throughout, even in high school, uh, AU season, I wasn't the, the premier guy on my AU team uh, until late in the season. And um, coming into college, uh, you're not playing your freshman year. And, and, and I mean, you start just sophomore year, but it's still not the same as what happened my junior and senior year. So um, I would think just, just really working hard and um, just kind of being a quote unquote underdog is kind of kind of where that, that developed from. What are the future plans for Will Cummings? If you had to, in an ideal world, Tell me what Will Cummings will be doing professionally. What is it? Um, I would say I'll be in the NBA. Um, that's what everybody's dream is, to play in the NBA. Um, but uh, worst case scenario, I'll be playing basketball professionally somewhere. Um, but I, I, right now I have my set, uh, my mind set on uh, the NBA. And I'm, uh, my work ethic is going to go a uh, testament to that. So. Let's say we bring in an NBA GM into the studio right now. We just called into <laughs> the station. He's saying, I want to talk to this kid, Will Cummings. Why should I? get you in the draft, free agency, or just give you a chance in summer camp, what would you say to him? How would you sell yourself? Um, I would say I'm just a hard worker. Um, I, I really going to do anything to try and win uh, basketball games. Um, I really just put my heart on the court every time I, I try and play basketball and really just defend well and do, do everything, all the little things to try and win games. And um, Really just my whole thing is just trying to win basketball games and, and however that happens, um, however, however I make plays to win games. Um, that's what I'm going to do and try and provide leadership while doing it. 
Before we let you run, as Will Cummings joins us in the studio following a Temple loss in the NIT, 60-57, to we're going to celebrate the career of Will Cummings. There were so many fantastic moments, whether it was those hard drives to the rim that resulted in an and one, beating top 25 teams, uh, getting into the NCAA tournament, even the NIT run that you guys went on this year. If I had to say your best moment at Temple University, what would it be? Uh, I would say I would say the upset of Kansas okay. uh, this year. That was that was a really cool experience. Um, just sharing that and, and seeing the happiness on everybody's faces and and just the the overall just happiness that everybody had and um, just the, the vibe around campus. Everybody was buzzing. I mean, it was just a great moment uh, that I felt like I was really a huge part of and and you know the guys too. So um, I would say that's really my my best memory that I'm gonna have as far as taking away. All right. Well, Will Cummings, we appreciate a great four years here at Temple University. Always been kind to our show, coming on into the studio. And uh, we really thank you taking a few minutes out of your time today to come on in here. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. There's Will Cummings of your Temple basketball team. What we'll do right now is we'll take a quick break, and we'll get to your phone calls coming up next.